Can you use a metal container to ferment soybeans? That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachia Takamiya, the Natto King. I am the author of Natto Unreleased and the Ikigai Tagi. First of all, thank you very much for commenting to my videos. I'm so sorry, but I have not been able to respond to all of your comments. Yeah. So I decided to make a video to answer some of your questions. So the first question is to the video, how to make natto from a wild plant instant pot version. Yeah. So it was the most shocking video. I'm so impressed. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, one important question, how do you increase the amount of natto kinase? The supplements contain 2,000 FU per capsule. I need 11,000 FU daily for removing artery placus. Yeah, I'm in deep trouble. Appreciate every hint. Right, okay. So now, first of all, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical practitioner of any kind, so I cannot answer any medical question. So for details, please consult your doctor or somebody who is specialized in medicine. Yeah, right. Now, so as far as the natokinase is concerned, I think for one pack, one pack of natto, which is about 50 grams, contain 1,500 FU of natto kinase, right? So, and then I think in Japan, the Japanese natto kinase association, they recommend 2,000 FU per day, yeah? Right, so that means if you eat two packs of natto, that's 100 grams, then you are consuming about 3,000 FU. Yeah. And if you eat about maybe 70 grams of natto, then you're consuming around 2000 FU. Right. So to gain sufficient natto kinase from natto, maybe you need to eat about 70 grams of natto. Yeah. But of course, in this case, it doesn't apply. So you need to take supplements then. Yeah, you need to take natto kinase supplements. Yeah. And also for a specific medical condition, please consult your doctor first because there, there may be some other things that you need to pay attention to. Yeah. Which I, I, I cannot answer. I, I don't know. Yeah. And also how to increase natto kinase. I don't know. I don't know if you can. I mean, in terms of increasing natto kinase in the natto itself, I don't know how to do it. Plus, I don't know if you can, and I don't know whether if you should. Yeah, because the amount contained in natto is natural. And if you change that, you might also change something else of the competition of the nutrient in natto, which you don't want to do that. So I think natto itself is a complete, you know, a food. So you don't want to change that thing. And the other thing is, you know, natto is not a medicine. Yeah. Please do not use as a medicine. Yeah. And if you want, natto is just a food. So it is not designed to cure or treat certain illnesses. It is just a regular food for healthy individual to eat. Of course, it has all those health benefits that I talk about, but it's a combination of eating natto and a lot of other food too. The everything kind of uh, support one another to create that benefit. Yeah. So natto itself doesn't do all the work. Yeah. Natto can support other element for example you know the natto kin the natto bacteria when it goes into your gut it helps other bacteria and gut as well so yeah it, it, please do understand please do see it in kind of holistically yeah right and then about supplements right so you know that i'm not in favor of supplements so much but it doesn't mean I'm against supplement. All I'm saying is you should make it your priority to 
absorb nutrient from food. Yeah, because if you absorb nutrient from food, it's uh, like a diverse nutrient. It's not like you are taking one particular type of nutrient, but you have a diverse nutrient in one food, yeah, which is more natural way of absorbing. But of course, if you have a certain medical condition, then you need to take supplement. Yeah, so in that case, I'm not against taking supplement. And this also applies to people who are very old, like people who are over 70 and so on. In fact, I myself might consider taking supplement if I reach, you know, age 70 or something. I mean, at the moment, I'm not taking any, any supplement. Yeah, I take zero supplement. I only eat food. Yeah, all nutrient I absorb come from food. But let's yeah if i become 70 i might change my mind i mean it's possible because our body will be different i'm sure a lot of function will deteriorate once you reach certain age no matter how uh no no matter how much exercise you do or how you know much good diet you practice or fasting you practice you you cannot beat the aging yeah i i i, I well, I don't think so. I don't think you can completely beat aging. You can slow down the aging process, but you cannot stop it completely. So when certain age comes, then I may have to take supplement. Yeah. Okay. And then the next question. Um, how? To, so the next question is to the video, how to make natto from white plant by natto king. Thank you for the video. I'm going to buy your books. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, do you happen to know if natto can be fermented in a stainless steel container? I can't find an answer anywhere. And I know kombucha, for example, shouldn't be fermented in a metal vessel. Um, the Canadian government is passing roads that are going to make it increasingly difficult to get natural health products, such as natto kinase. Oh, I wonder why. Uh, so I really appreciate uh, these do-it-yourself recipes. Bless you. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't see why not. Yeah. I mean, so when you ferment soy beans, usually I use a plastic container, which is in the yogurt maker that I use. Or now I have this glass container which I used in the instant pot yeah so in the last in the, the the last time when I made a video about making natto using an instant pot I used a glass container which was also uh which is also a container of the same yogurt maker so I have now two containers one is plastic one is glass okay so you can use either of them yeah and then yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I, I have not used the stainless steel container, but I'm sure you can. Yeah, as long as it fit in the yogurt maker or the instant pot. In the case of instant pot, because it is pretty big, so most container uh, will fit inside the instant pot. So I think what you need to do is just try using a, you know, metal container to ferment um soybeans yeah but uh, i would check i would check to see if it's you know uh possible or not and I, i'll do it myself too all right so the next question is to a video can you make fermented brown rice with an instant pod okay so um now i could not actually make fermented brown rice using an instant pot. I mean, I, I could, but it wasn't, you know, completely successful, right? So, and I, I kind of did it several times, but now I don't think instant pot is suitable for making fermented brown rice. It is better to use a regular pressure cooker and um regular jar rice cooker yeah i mean the pressure cooking side of the instant pot is okay it's just like a keep warm setting the keep warm setting with the instant pot 
didn't work well enough for fermenting brown rice. So for that part, it is better. I, I think it is better to use a regular jar rice cooker, right? But this person's question is, so hi, I've been getting very good result with a digital pressure cooker. I just have one question. Are we supposed to either, okay, so one, cook for 15 minutes at high pressure and leave for 15 minutes plus wait for pressure to release. Three, cook again at low pressure for 15 minutes. And four, start keep warm, start, start keep warm face at around 70 degrees. Or one, start cooking at high pressure for 15 minutes, switching down to low once the pressure is up, leave for 15 minutes plus wait for pressure to release and start keep warm phase at around 70 degrees. Yeah, the, the second one, the bottom one is the, the way that I use. So basically, first you, you set the gas, to, you, it's a digital, so I don't know, I've never used a digital pressure cooker, but for a regular pressure cooker with a gas stove, yeah, you want to, set your gas to a high frame yeah for roughly around 15 minutes but until the pressure comes on until the pressure comes on yeah you cook with a high frame and then once the pressure is high then you turn the gas down you turn the gas down to a low frame and then then cook it for 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes with a low flame. Yeah, then you turn the gas off. Yeah, and at that point, you cannot open the lid anyway because still the pressure is, you know, high and, you know, you cannot basically open the lid. So you have to wait. You have to wait for another 15 minutes or so until the pressure goes down completely then you can finally open the lid yeah um so that that is uh the way i do and that's the way most people do right however is it possible with the fast method well so th this person say i did i i did it the fast way a few times and the results were great today I checked your instructions and I'm now trying to try in the second way. Which way do you think is the best? Thanks. Right. So it is possible that the fast way works. Yeah. Because when, so after, you know, cooking it for about 50 minutes and then the pressure goes up, right? Then you stop it. Yeah. So then that means. Uh, instead of doing the kind of a, a cooking 50 minutes with a low frame, so it stopped, but it takes time for the pressures to go down, at least for about 15 minutes, yeah, which is almost the same as, you know, cooking it with a low frame, yeah, and then, but of course it's kind of a more, it's a gentler, it's, a, it's gentler than doing it, but still it's possible it is cooked, because when I make fermented brown rice sometimes i i make a mistake i mean what i what i mean is so when i'm doing the fast like 15 minutes of cooking with a high frame i often do something else while i'm waiting then i forget i forget for like 30 minutes or something and i say oh my goodness a pressure cooker yeah so i go down to the kitchen and check but it's too late so because the gas stove is setting the way that it automatically turns itself off once the heat is too too high, yeah, right. So I think maybe after 20 minutes or so, it turns itself off, right. So that means the bottom part was kind of burnt, yeah. But uh, so when I opened the lid, yeah, it was cooked. Yeah, it was done. Uh, partly because... Um, as long as the lid is on, yeah, the even the after the pressure is down, still it's kind of slowly cooking, 
because the temperature is still high inside. So slowly cooking and then uh, it, it kind of worked. Yeah, so, so it's possible the first way it can work. Yeah, but to make sure the second way is the correct way. The second way is the way that most people are used to make fermented brown rice. For the details of how to make fermented brown rice, please watch my other video, how to make koso genmai fermented brown rice. Thank you. And for uh, and about natto, please read uh, natto and rest. It has the section of DIY natto, how to make natto at home, or please watch my other videos about natto making. The most recent one is how to make natto from a wild plant, instant pot version, yeah? And then the book contains other useful information such as health benefits of natto, recipes, navigating natto's taste, and natto hacking, how to optimize natto eating for biohacking. <laughs> Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Hachiak Takamiya. I am the author of Natto Unleashed and the Ikigai Diet. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any answers to those comments yourself, please leave your comment in the comment section below. Thank you. Well, I'll see you in the next video. Live with you, Ikigai!